Mel's making the tea. Thank you, Mel. No problem. I'm just sitting here, all nice and relaxed. Got a pile of books. Roy's looking chilled. Sun is shining. Got a lovely view from the window of the caravan of the septic tank. In the embers, I see. You don't put it in. No, no, you're just heating it, it up. Above. Okay. I'm just try to warm it as much around the pipe as possible. You're on a flame, that you're near a flame. The electrician said this polypipe needed straightening out a little bit so that the angle wasn't quite so tight for when the ESB came to connect it. Noel had a novel idea of how to do that by heating it up and gently bending it into the right shape like when they adjust your glasses at the opticians. And then do you have to run back to see how much you need to bend it? No, I'm just going to do it by eye here. All right. It's like having your own forge. <laughs> <laughs> Forgery. <laughs> so that was originally a 90 degree rend. Yeah. So it would have been down here somewhere. Yeah. So we've just taken maybe 15 degrees out of it. Yeah, yeah. Can you see now? The end of that is more in line. So that pipe uh, yeah. is going to get cut off down there. And now this is more in line. And that pipe will get cut off there. And then it'll be running definitely more in line. Yeah. Good. I was a bit worried about you the breaking it. It is cracking the flags out there. So I thought I would do a quick survival guide to what to pack if you're coming on holiday to Ireland. As a general rule of thumb, I would say no matter what, month you're coming in just pack for every season just pack for winter spring summer and autumn because it's all of those things in any one day you, know, you need really warm things like i put this in it just gets really chilly especially if you've got no heat in your caravan did i mention we haven't got electricity yet and so that is lovely one of those sort of like snuggly things yeah um waterproofs always need a waterproof i like this one because it's also sort of furry lined so you know it's warm as well but you can have sudden showers and it's a good one to have uh, layers stuff that you can layer t-shirts vesty shirts because it suddenly turns really hot well you're just having to strip off the layers but equally it can turn cold so jumpers nice big woolly jumpers good idea and in terms of footwear always well is and even if you have a hot spell and you're wearing a sundress because who'd have thought that i'd be needing a sundress but i'm glad i packed it because honestly it's just scorchio today and I feel so much more comfortable just letting some fresh air to my legs but at the same time I've got two, two I can't show you two pairs of socks on from this morning when I woke up because socks tend to slide off in wellies don't they but two pairs tends to hold them in place but even if it gets sunny and everything starts to dry up there's still going to be a wet bog somewhere and if you're anything like me you'll put your foot in it so wellies with a sundress why not just one other thing I forgot to mention is that you will need to keep an eye on the time because after seven o'clock you will need to put all of the layers back on no matter how warm it is you'll need to have a hoodie up because the midges come out and you will get bitten you need some of these to wipe all over you I thought I didn't need it but then they've got I don't know I've got scabs all over my legs and my arms they just get in there so I hope you found that helpful you're welcome I'm just saying when we've had a day like this, these solar panels are performing really well. Even you can see now the sun's still on them this evening. And I'm just gonna show you inside the caravan. It's a bit of a mess in here, so just close your eyes. Just come straight to where we look at the voltage. It's there, look on the green. It's pretty full. And we've been charging all day, charging our phones. And the power bank, there look, the power bank's full. 
because uh, this is really what we use it mainly for just to keep on line and to have the uh, yeah that one's one they've got three of us and when i'm doing the editing and so on it's just pretty much all day i'm using the phone so it's good free energy get your rocking chair out my banjo <laughs> what did you just say i says we'll be able to look down the drive and if we see any intruders coming we'll spot them a mile off <laughs> and we'll be able to prepare <laughs> I think we need to get about a pack of like five poodles to really scare people oh, off. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Imagine, and Roy would be like the head of the herd. Good morning. It's our last morning at the Hidden House. Sid and I will be returning to the UK tomorrow. So feeling a little bit sad, but also happy that we've been here for some important things that have been happening, in, most notably the digging of the well. So I thought I'd just take you for a little walk around. I was going to have a walk around that top field that behind me. Let me just turn it around there. Noel is just doing something in the, getting something he needs. Um, what have you got there? <laughs> Darling, you look like an axe murderer. Doing? If if you don't see me again, I'm putting it on camera that I'm alive and well at 11.53 on Monday the 29th. So I thought I'd just take a little walk. I'll just show you where I am. Just come across the little bridge there, our little corrugated iron bridge to our new toilet there. And, and we're going to carry on going further along. Now it's a bit dodgy coming in this this part here because towards the edges here is where we distribute the uh, toilet waste <laughs> so we're going to go straight ahead that way we should be safe this is a to the, uh, I suppose so it's the top field I don't think we've given them names particularly but this is the first field on the left as you're driving down the lane there uh, this field is ours so right to the boundary of well we might find some boundary markers but to the tree line all around here so let's have a little walk because I haven't done this before and um, it's just long grass should be all right maybe it'll get a bit boggy in the middle but yeah I was just feeling it's like heart-wrenching <laughs> having to pull yourself away I was thinking how it's like like being in a long dis distance relationship and people have that don't they where you, you plan for the future but just the practicality of life means you you're still in a job and you can't just change everything immediately you have to plan and um, it's getting quite boggy in the middle of this field and uh, I've got my wellies on though that's how it will be and I, I have a job thankfully my job is as an, an intergenerational community worker, facilitator. And what that really means is just bringing people of different ages together. So I kind of like social work. And we do that by having a cafe, a community cafe, open twice a week and we do coffee and I'm gonna start doing soup and toasties and just knocking on doors really in the local area and just inviting people don't be alone be come and be with someone we're here we're always here we're just here to be with you and to listen and just to meet friends and so the lovely thing about having a job like that is that if you're feeling a little bit lonely yourself you know it's uh, it does you good people need people don't we that's how we cure loneliness just being with others and you always feel better afterwards i used to find that in teaching that no matter what was happening in my life, if I went into the classroom, when you're with the kids, they're, uh, they're a tonic, they're refreshing. They always feel better. It's always nice to hand them back at the end of the day, of course, but... Uh, so we're at a clearing now. This is quite nice. So you see the long grass there that we've just come through, waded through? And this is a little bit easier, just to walk through. 
I know that there'll be lots of changes by the time I come next time. So, you know, that makes it a, a little bit easier and also a little bit sad because it will never be the same again. It's been tough having to live completely off grid. And the first time we did it last summer was purely to save money because when we looked up the cost of going to a, an Airbnb, firstly there wasn't one really close to where we are, where we are and we'd have had to travel a while every day but it was about two thousand pounds well no perhaps two thousand euros about eighteen hundred pounds and you just think to yourself you know that that would be a third of a third of a well you know you translate it to what you you need for the uh, for the build and it's just not um, just not viable it just makes sense to put up with a little bit of hardship for the sake of saving money but in the end it was a lovely thing to do we absolutely loved it we we had such fun you felt as though you were kind of playing out and never coming back in you know when you're a kid and you used to go out to play and then you would get called in for the evening or to have your dinner or something and it's just like being able to do that and, and stay out <laughs> all the time for days and weeks at a time and it's felt a bit like that this time really you just completely switch off it's just a slower pace of life it took me a while at first the first couple of days were a bit strange you know we got here quite late and I was like oh, I'm ready for a cup of tea I'm ready for something to eat there's nothing in the fridge because we don't have a fridge a working fridge and you know just wanted to wash your hands to feel to freshen up to use the shower all of that but anyway you get used to it you adapt and the benefits of just being away from modern life, this slower feeling more calibrated to nature, you know, the natural rhythm of things, going to sleep when it gets dark, because we, uh, we have to. Sid's got a little light in his, his caravan and it always looks really sweet with a little light on, like a little cabin in the woods. But uh, this will be the last time we have that experience because of course, you know, we've got a connection now in the house over there and there's a, there'll be a cable that connects to the caravan. So the caravan has a good fridge and hobs to cook on, lighting, heating. It will be very different and I'm really pleased for Noel because it's starting to, even now, turn a bit colder on the evenings. So uh, he'll be comfortable, much more comfortable. And the thing is, we probably won't see him again until um, until November time, you know. He'll just keep going now, especially because with the grant, you have to just, you have a time limit. So it's 13 months about, a lot to be done in that time. So he'll be project managing that and it'll go quickly. So, yeah, that's going to be a long time. Probably he'll come home next end of November to be with us for Christmas. So, yeah, it's going to be a long, a long distance relationship. But thankfully, because of internet, because of, uh, you know, WhatsApp, we're able to do little video calls and things and able to see what he's been doing, show me, show me around. But I'd be interested to know if... Um, if there are other people having having this experience, you know, there are a few people on YouTube who are, um, you know, renovating, but a lot of people have made that lifestyle change together with their partner or as a family and just up sticks and got in a caravan and gone. And they're having that adventure all together. Whereas, you know, I don't know if there's anybody else that are doing the same thing we're doing, where one person stays in the UK or wherever they are uh, to move to another country, uh, just, you know, in the, as an, in the interim, just getting things prepared. And it's the psychological kind of challenge, I think, that's the hardest. Everything else you sort of put up with, all the physical hardship, you, you know, if you're together, it's, you, you just, give each other moral support through it <laughs> and when things aren't going right or to plan but that's part of having an adventure 
And equally so, it's that being apart makes you value things, doesn't it? Just makes you value and hold on to your dream and your hopes and just, uh, yeah, not, not wish time away. I think that's the thing. I don't want to be wishing time away. It's knowing that even this is part of the adventure. It's part of the journey, this yearning and longing. And it isn't, it isn't just as people. I'll actually miss the, I'll actually miss the place as much as I miss Noel. I'll miss being here. I'll miss the house and the place because we just love it here. We really do feel like we have a relationship with it. And you know, this, this thing about getting water, that was a, an, another part of this relationship with the land. That's what having a homestead is really all about. You know, some people tell us we don't know what we're doing. That's some people, most of you are incredibly, incredibly supportive, but sometimes people, you know, just scoff a little bit and tell us how experienced they are. And they know what they're doing and you do it like this and you'll never be able to do this or that or whatever. But I don't think homesteading is about your skills necessarily alone. You learn things as you go along. Uh, it's, it's about your relationship with the land and the place. That's what makes it special. That's what makes it, let's go over here, something that's a lifestyle change. It's about feeling a connection to nature and you don't get the chance to have that in modern living. You know, the houses that we've lived in have always had a little garden, but a tiny little garden, really close to lots of busy traffic. And this is the first time really we've had outdoor space. And, and I know that there's something about it. There's something about, about how, how, how good it is for you as a human being to be more uh, attuned to the, the land. You know, you sleep better, you're getting the fresh air, you're getting the exercise. It's, it's not just good for your body because you get strong, but it's good for your mental health, you know? And uh, you just feel calmer and happier. I think it's been good for all of us. I think it's been really good for Sid. Teenager, Sid's 16, not yet 17. And just wanting to help and do the work and do a day's work and feel that satisfaction, but also enjoying the outdoors. Gorgeous sunrise. Looks like it'll be another beautiful day. Goodbye house, goodbye Roy, goodbye trees, goodbye road. See you again very soon. That's nice, right? Just spoke the moment.
just wanted to see if you can go into your kitchen and get hot soapy water. A deep bowl of hot soapy water like that. Do you realise how lucky you are? Do you realise what a luxury that is? First night back in Cornwall. Missing Noel, but quite heartened by that beautiful sky. Just look at that. What a sunset.